We are at the lock picking village at DEF CON 30 and I am going to take on an expert to see who can lock pick the fastest and figure out, eh, do I match up? But right now, let's jump in. What do we have on the table right now? We have obviously locks and then we have a couple tools. Yep, so we each have a, a basic uh, master lock style lock. Yours is actually a master lock. Mine is not a master lock, but it's got basically the same internals in it. Um, we both have a tension wrench, uh, AKA a turning tool because this actually turns the core. And then we have a pick here, which is gonna push up on the pins and we're gonna set them in a certain order to find which ones are binding, which ones are loose. You set the binding pins, you know, first, and then as you go through, you'll find all the binding pins. Once you hit them all, the lock will fall open. Okay, so we have relatively identical tools, yep. identical locks, Yep. and we're gonna see who can do this the fast. Now, I am, I would say I've done this before, and I'm curious how this is gonna work out. So, I would set this in there like that. Yep. I'd put tension on it. Yep and I'm delaying for time as I, get a re as I get a little bit of a head start. Yep. And maybe he'll notice. <laughs> oh, you're good. Oh, okay. That was a problem. Well, um, this is clearly a harder lock, isn't it? No, it's actually not. The, the internals are pretty similar. I think what I just did, this probably has a relatively flat bidding, key bidding. So what I did is when I set that back pin, my pick most likely um, kind of mimicked what the key looks like and just set all the pins at once. And that does happen sometimes. It's not uncommon for that to happen. How are you not nervous on camera? I know I'm like fumbling all over the place. I, I do this a lot. And a lot of these locks are pretty worn out because they've been used all weekend, but Yeah, this one is definitely worn out. I can imagine a lot of the pick, uh, picks here, the locks here, get, tend to get worn out or maybe even put in a place where they get unpickable a little bit. They do, they do. Some, so some attempt, sometimes when people put too much tension on what'll happen oh is the pins will actually start to deform a little bit, which will make it a lot more difficult to actually pick these locks. <clears throat> and unlocked. <laughs> I can't believe that you're able to just blow through these locks while I'm struggling. So here's the thing though. Yes. Same tools, same locks. What, what makes you better than me? And I know that sounds like a weird practice. thing. Practice. Practice. Practice, 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 practice. And what are you feeling for? Like I know this is like a hard thing. Like you're trying to describe how food tastes. Right. Like, what are you actually feeling for? So you're reaching in and you're feeling the very bottom of the pin. So you're trying to align your pickup with the, the center of the pin internally. And like this first pin, you can see it's kind of, when I push my pickup, it just springs back into place. Those are the pins you want to leave alone. When you find one that's actually tough to push on, that is then the binding pin. So that's the one you actually want to pick until it clicks. And I imagine like if this is if this is the pin, you have kind of this like hole here. Yep. And when you're doing tension, it's kind of like pivoting that and binding it like this inside. And yep. then you're ki kind of kicking it up. Exactly. When, when it comes to lock picking, one of the things I've always struggled with is how much tension are you putting on? And I know this is, because I see your, your thumb kind of pushing pretty hard on it. And I've yeah. always heard, is it a light touch so, or is it a yes. really hard touch? Be so to begin, it's a very light touch. Um, reason being, people tend to put way too much tension on. Um, we start people out with about as much tension as it takes to push down a keyboard key, uh, which is not much at all. So if your fingers are turning white like mine are here, that we would say is too much tension. Um, I'm pretty experienced in this, and I tend to actually prefer heavy tension, but I've altered my techniques to accommodate that. Okay. So with a beginner putting on this much tension, what they're gonna do is they're gonna lock all the pins in place, then they're gonna go try to pick one and bend the pick. What I'm doing though is I'm putting a lot of tension on just to find the binder, the one that I wanna push on, and then when I go to pick it, I'm actually loosening up that tension to set the pin. Oh. And then I'm putting the tension back on to hold that pin in place and to find the next one. I imagine this is where 
practice comes in at getting that feel of the lock. Yep. Now, if I want to learn lock picking and I want to get better at it, so I can actually like maybe maybe compete on on some semblance of a level. What is the best way to start? Is it to pick up just master locks like this, or would you suggest a like a beginner set? I know Tool has these these basic locks where you have six pins in there, and then it go it starts with one pin and yep. then two pins and then three. Yeah. So a progressive set when you're first getting the feel of it, a progressive set is going to be the best way to go. Um, the reason is you can spend a lot of time on the one and the two. With the one, just one pin in there, you can make that pin bind or not bind. So if you don't have any tension on the lock, the pin's not binding. You can feel what it feels like to have a springy pin. Okay. Then when you force the tension on there, or put any amount of tension on there, you can feel what it feels like for that pin to resist your pick. And um, I actually have people spend a lot more time on the one and the two than most instructors do. Reason being, you can really drill it into your head, the difference between a binding pin and a non-binding pin. And the whole game here, when you're single pin picking, is finding the binding pin, setting it, then finding the next binding pin, and setting it, and then finding the next binding pin, and setting it, and just, as soon as you've got all of them set, the lock will fall open. So you just said something like, when you're doing single pin picking. Yep. So that would be the, picking one pin at a time. Is there other ways to like yes, pick a lock? there are absolutely other techniques. Um, so there's a technique called zipping, which works really well on quick set locks. It doesn't tend to work as well on these, which are um, actually Corbin keyways. Would this be like a quick set? Uh, any of no, these those are, so those are master locks. Those are actually have a bit more tension on them, so they're a bit harder to do this with. But what you're doing when you're zipping a lock is you're just kind of putting a little bit of tension on and rip it. This isn't the correct pick either. I'm just demonstrating yep. the technique. But you're ripping the pick out of there, trying to actually bounce the top pins up to create a gap between the pins. Is it similar to like bumping it a lock? Is. Exactly. It's, it's basically bumping a lock just with a pick. Okay. Now, when you're doing this, you're kind of tweaking the tension yep. just to try and get keep zipping with a little bit different tension? Exactly. You, you want to keep tension on the whole time, but you want to keep a lighter tension than you would when you're picking um, because you want to allow those pins to be able to shoot up. If you're putting a ton of tension on there, then none of the top pins are going to move. Is there other ways of picking the lock? There's Absolutely. Pins, there's zipping. raking. Um, if you, actually, if you grab that necessary nine set over there that we offer over at the, uh, the tool merch counter, we have these, which are called wave rakes. We call them the wicked waves. Um, they've actually been designed through a computer program that mapped out a sinusoidal and cycloidal wave pattern and uh, there was a lot of time put into these to, to determine the best spacing, the best pattern, and there's a con continuous taper from the base of the pick here to the tip. Um, so if you look at the thickness of the pick, it actually continually decreases as you move to the tip. It's kind of hard to see, but it, it's, uh, it's definitely there. And the reason that's done is when you put pressure anywhere on that pick, it's completely equalized throughout the entire pick. But so, so these are, that's just kind of how these are made, but these are what's called rakes. And the way you use these is you would insert them in, you know, any lock. You would use, generally you would use bottom of the keyway tension with a tensioner that fits correctly. And tension fitment is really important. It's actually more oh, important really? than selecting the correct pick is selecting the correct tensioner. That is, you can see here. Hold on, you're glazing over this topic because I think this is interesting because when I pull a tensioner, I just grabbed any old tensioner. Yeah. It's, I, I want to, I know we're distracting from the rake right now, but that's okay. how do you select the tensioner? Like so how would I know a good tensioner? So you want to select the tensioner that fits in the keyway, does not block your pick, and puts the, uh, basically you want it to get out of the way, but also be able to um, put tension on the core as well. So you don't want it to block your pick. You don't want it to pinch the core because the tensioner can move under this little piece of warding right here and actually seize up that core. And what happens then is you think you're picking the lock, but you're actually stopping it from moving by doing that. Okay. So tension fitment is way more important even than proper pick selection. Um, tensioning is seriously the most important part of this. Th that is something which has been lost on me forever. I know there's even like these ones which are like, sort of sliced out, yep. and I know you can kind of tension from the exactly. top Exactly, those are made to tension from the top of the keyway like this. We tend to not tension from the top when we're raking because the rake will knock the tensioner out of the keyway. Um, I can actually demonstrate a little bit better with this tensioner here. 
um, when I'm raking, the waves on the rake can catch the tensioner and completely pull it out of the, of the Okay. So, that is, the, the whole idea that the tensioner is actually like an important tool, I know that's sort of silly. I didn't realize there was that much like strain put on it. Yep. Sorry, I distracted us from raking. Yep. Yeah, see, it just happened right there. So I distracted you from raking. Let's jump back into that. How do you select which rake to use, um, whether with, it's a four or five? So with rakes, you would generally just try them. Okay. Um, you'll try a few of them. Um, we actually discovered just a second ago this lock is a little bit damaged, so <laughs> this yeah, may not work as well. And but. this is the, the other thing is we're doing this all live. So the fact that you're even able to pick while a camera's on you is incredible to me because I'm struggling even with the basic, most basic of locks. I do have a bit of practice in that, so. Let's see, yeah, the tension is gonna keep so popping out. So with, with this, is we've tried raking, we've tried, it was zipping, yep. single pick, raking, is there any other ones? Um, there are, so there are other attacks that you, there's a, there's, a it's whole slew. I know we can talk. We yeah. can talk for so long right. on this. Right. So there is an attack which is probably not going to work on this lock, but I'll demonstrate how you do it. It's called overlifting. And an overlift attack, what you're going to do is put a tensioner into the lock. You find the right tensioner that fits. And actually, let's go this way. It's and funny, by the way. I started this video going, we're gonna get a basic overview, and now I'm just fascinated <laughs> yes. by all the different types, because I've only known single pick, and maybe gotcha. raking, the zipping, and these other ones. Yeah, so what we can do is we can actually take this pick and lift all the pins as high as they'll go, and put a lot of tension on that core. And then we slowly release our tension, and the pins will start to fall back down. And in certain locks, this one's actually made a little bit too good for this to work, but in certain locks, what will happen is the pins will actually set themselves as you release tension. So you'll feel the individual clicks as you release tension and ultimately it'll just fall open. This is so funny, my mouth just like wide open staring at this because I know there's like the idea in some of the old master locks that you can lift it. And one of the th techniques you're using, which probably the cameras and picking up on- So actually I just your... overlifted four oh of my gosh. pins and I just had to set the last two. You actually got it, that's amazing. <laughs> And the other technique you kind of did is you had the pick uh, flipped over. You yep. weren't actually picking, you were actually just using the flat end yep. to shove it all the way up. All right, yeah. I, need, I need to ask, there's this red lock over here. Okay. We all know locks aren't all created equal. Obviously there's ba basic and master locks, but this doesn't feel like any <laughs> more secure than these other ones. I mean like, the, heck, the master lock is heavier than this one. Yep. Like what is, obviously I see the name on it, the ABUS. And it's, it's more of a, I know it's a secure lock. What makes it a secure lock? So this actually serves a completely different purpose than this. This one is made to secure, you know, your shed at home or something like that. These locks are made specifically to lock out mechanical and electrical equipment for people to work on them. So these locks, they're made pretty, the, the ex exterior of this lock doesn't matter because it's not for security. They actually want to be able to break this open and get it off in case something happens to the key holder and they need to get the machine working again. But these are used for safety and, the, and they have to be destructively opened, not covertly opened. That so, is, wait, hold on. That's actually a really interesting concept. So you use the words uh, covertly and what was, it, what was it? Destructively, it would destructively. be overtly. So effectively, I want to be able to, take, be able to take a hammer, break this thing open, but not let it be picked. Right, exactly. So when you break this open, someone will know that it was broken open. If you pick this lock, there's a almost similar possibility to like, that almost no like one will the know. tapper evident. Like, exactly. We want to make it be able to break open, and people want to be able to open their packages, but not like be able to like, pull it off. Yep. Okay. Exactly. So these will be assigned to individual technicians. Each technician, that's why it has this property of on the back. They will generally have their name and technician number written here. They will then lock the equipment out that they're working on and when they're done, they are the only one that has the key to this lock. Okay. But then, if something were to happen to them while they're working, if an emergency occurs, they need to be able to take a hammer, shatter this thing, and get into the equipment, but um, you know, no one can remove this without so, the people knowing. I've now seen you pick, I don't know, three, four, five locks. Uh, why could you pick this one, just Probably. as fast as these ones? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, 
I haven't tried this one, and actually, I, this is slightly different. I guess the question is, is like, if is the, I don't, I, is this one a secure, like a special it. lock? It is. So the internals of this are actually very secure. It has what's called security pins in it. Um, I think these have what are called spool pins, which what will happen is when you get to a certain point in the lock, it will fall slightly open. It will like try to open. I would imagine like, again, I'll kind of use a, a crude example is if this is a normal pin where this is how these things adjust, Perfect. what the so spool make it pin. Like a spool of thread. So come in here and then just make, basically you're, you're thinning out the center. Nope. All the way? Yep, all the so way. I'll do it you're, on the side. You're thinning out the center of the pin, making it look like a spool of thread. Yep. So like that on both sides. Exactly. So what's happening on a normal one without this, you're, you're picking it up across, what's that line called, the shear, shear line. line? Yep. You're picking this up, so if this is one pin, you're pushing it up and aligning the shear line, where with this, you kind of pick up and it binds right here, yep. like where the lock would come in here and bind, versus then, so what, you have to, what do you have to do after that? So if you have so, it bound like that. Yep, so what you do at that point is you'll get into what's called a false set, where the lock, is, you feel like it's gonna open, but it doesn't. And then you have to go through and you'll test each pin and find ones that will give you what's called counter rotation. So when you feel counter rotation, you actually feel the tensioner pushing back on this finger. Okay. And when so you, I'm guessing it would go you know, something like this exactly. a little bit. Exactly. And so when you feel that, you're going to actually let up on the tension a bit to allow that counter rotation to push your finger out of the way. And then when you get past that lip there, you will then apply a little bit more tension when you're right here and then the pin will set itself. Okay. Well, it won't set it, you'll set it, but it will be able to sit up on that shelf that's created every time that you pick a pin. Is there ways to learn security pins similar to the basic lock set where there's going to be like six pins in there? Is yep. there a way to, is there like a security basic? Yeah, we actually have what's called the advanced set and that has um, from one to four spool pins in the lock. It's progressively pinned with one through four spools. Okay, now we've talked about Tool so much. I mean, actually I should say, we haven't talked about Tool nearly as much as I would like to because it's such a cool organization. Not a sponsor or anything like that. I just love what they do. I've referenced this URL so many times for local laws because every state yes. has different laws about lock sports. Absolutely. Of whether or not you're allowed to use them. Last time I checked Michigan, they're even worded a little weird because how Michigan does theirs is you have to be a certified locksmith but the way you become a certified locksmith is by declaring yourself a certified locksmith. And then all of a sudden you're allowed to own lockpicks. It's a really goofy law. Yeah. And it may have changed, it changed at one point, but I love, I love that if you go to tool.us, you can see all of those laws. Yep, absolutely. And it's spelled with three O's. The other thing is, is the, this is, do you know anything about tool where you can speak to it a little bit? Is it? Yeah, a, absolutely. Are they a non-profit? They're a non-profit. We're a 501c3 nonprofit, and uh, yeah, everything we do goes back into the organization to do things like this, to teach lock picking to the public. Um, we do have individual chapters all over the U.S. Um, Tool is actually worldwide. They started in the Netherlands, um, so Tool.nl was the original guys. They have they have chapters all over Europe, and probably further than that, I think there's Tool in Japan as well. Oh, wow. in, in Japan, I think. I'm not gonna speak on the legalities there, I think it's a little iffy, but we also have international law on the website as well. Oh, that's great. And the one thing I love about Tool is like, you see them here, but like, we, disclosure is, this. we don't arrange these videos. We come in, we sit down, we talk, and this is the type of help that they give everyone around Khan, which is so cool. The other thing is, is this is a great resource to buy lock picks. I Absolutely. know it's, it feels self-serving you saying it, but I have, bought and off here. Yep. I recommend other people, not only do you get the learning sets and everything like that around people who are passionate about it, yep. but lock picks are like fall into that category of you get some really scummy companies often selling them. Absolutely. Where not only do they sell cheap things, but also like you get like a really goofy set, it's like a set with like yeah. five different triangles. This is a set on the site. This is actually like the set you're selling yep. here. This one's mine too. Uh, so <laughs> Which, the, yeah, this is the set that we're selling here. It's slightly different than the set we've had in previous years. Um, we used to actually have six tension tools. What we've done is we've actually changed the tension tools to where instead of just being a different width, they're actually a different thickness. 
and that is way more important than the width of the tool. Okay. Um, now, when I look at my kit, I have tons of tension tools in there. I even have metal to make tension tools on the fly because of how important tensioning is for every specific lock. But we do our best to include everything that a beginner would need to start out. So, you know, we have the, the hooks here. We've got the, the half diamond, which can be used for both single pin picking and zipping. Um, and also to count the pins. I didn't mention that, but it's really easy. So basically you just put the flat side in, lift all the pins all the way up, and then slowly extract it. And you'll hear the clicks. You just count the clicks and that's how many pins are in the lock. Oh, that's cool. Um, so we have this guy, which is kind of just to reach in the back of certain locks. And then we have the two wave rakes, which are kind of, I wouldn't say the most useful, but they're def out of the set. There's a set of four of these, um, but these are kind of the ones that you'll get the majority of locks open with. We do sell a Wicked Wave set that's four of these, which is kind of a more complete set, but we really did try to include it in the basic set because we want to make it accessible to everyone. So if I want to start today, yep. what would you recommend? Picking up a set like this and then maybe the basic set of locks? Absolutely, absolutely. Awesome. And uh, we, we generally offer a, a slight discount at cons where if you buy the two together, you get like $10 off. Oh, that's great. Hey, th thank you so much. This is nothing, by the way, that is his handle. Thank you so much. This was so much information. Uh, the thing I learned is that the tensioning is way more important than the pick selection. That's Absolutely. huge for me. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching, and as always, hack on. <laughs>